Hello, James Flatten here with the Minnesota Space Grant. To talk through one way to assemble a thin cam for a high power rocket. I have a rocket here. And so basically what I'm going to discuss is what's going on on the inside. Well, the fins are sticking out, but in fact, the fins stick in as well. And I wanna talk about how to assemble this, at least one way to assemble this through slots in the airframe. Um, and not the only possibility, but it's really important if you do it this way, that you do all the steps in the right order. So let me switch over to another camera. And the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, a little bit of epoxy fillet work because my epoxy is already mixed up and so I don't want that to dry before I get to it. Okay, so here I have some, uh, this happens to be aero epoxy. It's getting a little stiff, so I wanna use it right away. And um, just, just as a test, here's a piece of wood as a fin. Here's a piece of airframe. I put a slot in it because quite often you build rockets by sticking fins through slot cracks. If you look at this particular fin, you'll notice that I've drawn a line here. That's just to separate the part that won't be seen, that's referred to as the tang, and the part that will stick out from the rocket. So that's the fin itself. So I'm going to insert the fin through the slot. I'm not going to worry too much about trying to keep it exactly radial. But I just want to point out that a good way to do epoxy work here is to put epoxy along this crease, this crease, and also on the inside, the crease that's against the airframe and perhaps the crease that's against the motor mount tube if there was one. Again, this thing won't necessarily stay exactly radio. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. So um, I could potentially put tape here and here to make sure the epoxy doesn't go anywhere that I don't want it to, but um, let me just get some epoxy on there. And you know what? I will put some tape on. Oh. Okay, I'm back. So if I put some tape on parallel to the fin on the airframe, and then on the fin itself, parallel to the airframe, this will cover up things that I don't want epoxy to go on and give me the ability to smear the epoxy around a little bit more without without worrying so much about where it goes. So here we go. It's a bunch of epoxy, more than I need. I'm just gonna put it down in that crease. Nice and thick. And to be frank, this is pretty typical and this is pretty lousy. I want to do better than that just for the purposes of getting a nice aerodynamic result. So what I'm gonna do is take something that's curved I could use a spoon, I could use a stir stick itself. And I want to remove the epoxy that I'm not interested in just by making a nice curved fillet. Okay. Just wipe that off and do it one more time. Okay. So there we have it. That's in much, much better shape. Of course, I want to perhaps leave this horizontal while it's drying so that it doesn't run around. And also, I guess I would recommend, let's scrape it one more time in this direction. I would also recommend taking the tape off. And the reason is right now there is tape, uh, there's some epoxy on the tape. And if I were to leave the tape on until that epoxy dried, it would be very difficult to get the tape off. And I eventually do want the tape off for sure. I'm just going to remove the tape even while the epoxy is wet. Once I have the epoxy where I want it to go, and I don't think it's moving around on me very much at least, take the, take the tape off. A little bit of a lip there. Might end up having to sand that down. But that's a pretty nice fillet job. And again, I would leave this drying horizontally because if you left it drying vertically, the epoxy might have a tendency to slump. If the epoxy is basically the consistency of peanut butter or something like that, when you do your work, um, it's likely to stay put, especially if you leave this horizontal while it's dry. Okay, so 
Just wanted to get that out of the way for that sets up. Now let's talk through an actual high power rocket, not just this toy. And you'll see the point in the presentation where one would do this step. But I'm not actually going to put epoxy on the real rocket in part because it's a kit that I hope to hand out to somebody to build at some point and I don't want to spoil it. So here's the tail end of the actual airframe. Um, it's one of the fins, there's four, total of four fins. And I already have one of the fins marked with tape. It's actually one of the fins marked with tape and one of the slots marked with tape. And um, it's actually quite typical when you first get these things that it's hard to get the fin to go through the slot. And the reason is they, they cut these pretty tight. And so this doesn't go through very well. What I did in this case is I actually sanded this down for quite a long time to try and get it to go through. I could have sanded the slot wider open or I can sand the fin a little bit narrower. But either way, trying to get it so that the fin fits nicely in the slot. And in this particular case, you'll notice the tang, the part that you can't see, is a rectangular shape, but the fin sticks out a little bit deeper than the tang does. And in this particular kit, it's intended that that part is toward the rear rather than toward the front. So this is where the fin is ultimately going to go. Okay. Before I actually put uh, fins through the slots, though, let's talk about what else is going to go on the inside. And that, of course, is a motor mount tube. So the motor mount tube is going to be held centered by two centering rings. And in this case, again, so as not to spoil my kit, what I'm doing is I'm using tape to hold this centering ring. This is the forward centering ring in its location, more or less. It's still a, bit, a little bit wiggly. Um, and then here's the rear centering ring. And I've put some tape on that as well. This happens to be filament tape. In fact, I even made a handle so I could put this on, get it back off again. The reason for that is I want to glue this one in place in the rocket and not glue this one in place, at least not too soon. So again, doing things uh, out of order is one of the tricks here. Let's see, so here's my, here are the steps. Uh, first of all, I would scuff this up, make sure that it's uh, not shiny so that the epoxy won't stick to it. I will put my forward centering ring on and I would, I would glue it, top and bottom, possibly maybe even a little bit closer to the forward end, but this is fine. This is just to make sure it stays uh, stays put. Um, and that hole there, of course, is for an eye bolt. I'm not going to, in this demonstration, do an eye bolt, but you'll want to have an eye bolt on there. And of course, you'll want to have your shock cord very carefully tied and attached to the eye bolt. And then my recommendation for the next step, if this is your shock cord and it's tied to an eye bolt, is that possibly you put the shock cord down the tube. And the reason is I don't want to get epoxy on the shock cord itself. And there's going to be epoxy, wet epoxy around where this goes in a minute. So now that I have this, let's just say that this thing has been completely glued in place. And let's say that there's an eyeball attached to it. Of course, make sure in advance before doing any epoxy work that it's going to fit. So sand it down is necessary. Then I'm going to insert it inside of the airframe. In this particular case, I insert it so that I get forward centering ring forward of the slots. The rear centering ring will be back here. It will be rear of the slots. And so that's quite easy in this particular case. Sometimes it's tighter than this. And so my recommendation is once you're ready to install that, including the uh, shot cord attack, that you reach in with a dowel and you, you measure in your fingers perhaps approximately how far forward the centering ring is from the rear, okay? And then you uh, put some epoxy on here and you reach in just that far and you spread it around. So in other words, I'm spreading an entire bead of epoxy right inside here. This is where that centering ring is going to be placed. And I'm gonna push the centering ring up into that bead of epoxy. So let's assume I have epoxy mount inside of there. And now it's time to push this in. Uh, keep this particular point away from the fin slot. So you might want to even mark way back here where that point is located so that you don't end up with a fin lined up with your bolt. Okay. So here I push it in. And again, make sure it's sanded down so that you know it's going to go in because the epoxy is wet. And now I'm starting to strike epoxy and I push and I push and I push. And so now I'm pushing into the epoxy. I'm forming essentially a fillet of some sort above that centering ring. 
Unfortunately, if I were to let it go and let it dry like this, it would dry off center down here. So here's where I need to put the rear centering ring in place. And in this case, I'm using a tape, but you could also, if there was, for instance, peanuts or something like that on that rear centering ring, that would also allow you to grab onto it and pull it back out. But the key in this case is that I want to have it well centered while it's dry. And in fact, in this case, I would probably suggest that you let it dry vertically so that the glue, if it is to move around at all, doesn't drip forward into the airframe, but rather drips downwards onto the centering ring, which is where you want it to go anyway. Okay, so remember, this is glued, this is not glued. Let's assume this is now dry. And then I want to start installing fins. So here comes the first fin, and I will just show you one. But um, the first fin is going to go through this slot. And notice if I go inside, there's a centering ring here and a centering ring here, but the slot is still open. So if I start to push it in, I will eventually strike the thing below it, which is the motor mount tube. That's fine. So my recommendation is put a little bit of glue right on this edge and then push it in. So that makes a butt joint. And then the, the position of the slot will make sure that the fin is at the right location up to down and also make sure it's well aligned with the axis of the rocket. On the other hand, it does not keep it radial. So it's possible that this thing could be non-radial just because the, the slot is not good at pulling, it, pulling that. So what I'm going to propose is that we use a fin jig. So this, this jig is not the right jig for this particular kit because it has three slots for three fins, but this particular kit has four fins. On the other end, this will work for demonstration purposes. I can put this jig on. So I'm just sliding it on the airframe. And I'll slide it down. Until it reaches the fin. And I'll slide it over the fin. So what this is doing now is it's just making sure that the fin stays completely radial because the fin is being constrained by the jig. I'll only do this when I'm first starting to glue and then let that glue dry. And then once the things are completely radial, then I can take this jig off. You might imagine doing all of the fins at the same time. But right now, since I have the wrong jig, I can only do one at a time. But if I look here, I can see that the jig is going to pull the fin and keep it radial and not let it wiggle back and forth very much at all. And if it was very tight, it wouldn't let it wiggle back and forth at all. Also notice on this particular jig, there's a little bit of space left here and some space left there, which allows the jig to go on even if there are fillets or allows you to put in fillets while the jig is in place. Okay, so now that I have the fin jig, then I would propose that you do exactly what I did before. And that is put some epoxy right down here, make a fillet, make a fillet. In fact, here's what I would do. I would put the epoxy here and here and then let it rest horizontally. And then I would rotate it, put epoxy here and here, and let it rest horizontally, and then put epoxy here and here, and let it rest horizontally. So in each case, I'm getting two epoxy fillets at a time. And it turns out they're on adjacent fins. They're not on either side of one foot. You can imagine if you put them on either side of this fin, and then you let it sit horizontally, it could run this way, and it could run this way. On the other hand, if I have it here, it will stay in place, and it will stay in place. If you're uh, Epoxy is quite thick, then this probably won't be a, a big issue. But uh, anyway, that's my recommendation. And so now that you have the pins well set radially, then the next thing to do, you can take off the jig. It to do some epoxy work on the inside. Okay. So what I see is that my. Uh, <laughs> My inner piece has gotten away from me, so I'm just going to pull that back out again. Pretending here again. Okay, so I just got this reset. Put the fin back in place. Okay. Now that the fin is epoxied on the outside, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract this piece. This will stay in the center because it's being held by the epoxy that of the various fins, four, the four fins will be in place. They're all touching it. And now what I can do is I can reach inside here again with my stick and I can apply epoxy. So let's see if I can see this. I can apply it. Oh, wow, this is a little hard. Uh, apply epoxy on either side of the fin, on the airframe side, on either side of the fin, on the motor mount side. So I can more or less get six total fillets, two on the outside, four on the upper inside, and four on the lower inside. 
And it turns out that since the mirror doesn't touch the inside of it, it's not important for those to be able to believe that. Okay. Sorry for the noise in the background. I'm working in a recording in a workspace, and other people are in here too. So now let's assume that all the fins have been fully epoxied inside and outside. I have one more thing to do, and that is I need to make sure that I install my rail button. Assuming I'm using a rail button, presumably that will go approximately here above this lower center ring, which is out right now. So I'll reach in, I'll put a lower rail button in right there. And then I can finally go ahead and install this rear centering ring, I would have taken the tape off at this point. And again, I would add a bead of epoxy, push the rear centering ring up into the bead, and then here I can actually go then and add epoxy underneath it as well. So it's best if you can to get epoxy above and below the centering rings. In the case of the upper centering ring, I probably only had epoxy above the centering ring. So when all is said and done, go back to my original rocket. Here's approximately what it will look like. Okay, so in this case, see a centering ring. There's epoxy on the outside of it. There's epoxy on the inside of it. And then of course, there's the bead that I talked about. You could put a bead on the airframe and on the motor mount tube so you could have epoxy on the outside and inside edge of the upper surface. And then what all I'm able to see here is the lower surface. Ah, yes, don't forget, of course, make sure you prepare your lower centering ring with T-nuts or whatever you're gonna use for motor retention. So in this particular case, there's T-nuts inside of there, and then that's the screw that goes into the T-nuts. So don't forget that the center ring also has to be prepared in that way. So that's the advice I have uh, for through hole or through slot installation of sims. On the other end, Sometimes uh, you might want to just extend the fins, or, sorry, extend the slots all the way to the rear of the airframe. And if you do that, then you're actually able to build your fin cam outside, and then you can reach all of those inner fillets more easily, for instance. And then you can slide it in from the rear of the airframe. You might have to pull the airframe apart a little bit. The problem with that, though, is it damages the airframe. Right now, the airframe is such that the airframe is intact at the very bottom. And if you, if you mess that up, then you will have to repair that. So in that case, what I would do is I would slide it in, then I would perhaps tape around that very tightly. And when you are putting in your rear centering ring, tape around it tightly and make, make sure you repair essentially the damage you did so that the airframe looks and feels strong below the fans. But uh, this demonstration mostly was through slot construction.